That's pretty smooth, I would say. I'm turned around, no longer sees my face. It's still tracking me. Um, and it has nothing to do with the phone, but it's still, you can see it over there, it's still tracking me. The Ronin RS2, I believe. Uh, somewhat new for us. And we did store it on the gimbal, although the gimbal wasn't locked, so that's not necessarily good. Um, but this is our camera rig. We have a focus uh, control on the camera, so that way we can still record to a USB-C drive. Uh, we do have the uh, like radar or 3D LiDAR sensor for the autofocus, so that's gonna come in handy. And then at the bottom, which is gonna make this thing worth it, is the Raven Eye, which will allow us to do active track, so the gimbal will automatically follow someone that we circle or draw a square around. We do have some accessories, like we bought the, not the tripod mounts, like the extended arm package uh, for the Ronin, which means we can uh, mount it on a tripod without the battery itself. Uh, here we go. Detach the battery, so it's just a handle. Now I got this guy. I should be able to place it. Yeah, I'll just like Velcro it right there or something. There we go, that works. Why not? Not perfect. This is gonna take a while. Skip to like when I balance the whole thing. Some people might not have thought of this because it's kind of a hack. Um, the Raven Eye, we need to get HDMI signal to and we need to get HDMI signal uh, kind of into slash through this 3G converter from Blackmagic and I need to send SDI in and out. So I'm gonna be using all the ports on this guy as well as powering it. Camera one feed. It's gonna be the out. The control is gonna be the in. Okay, so that's that. I probably need to plug this guy up to a computer to set the settings on it. Then what I need to do is pull the HDMI that's gonna come out of the camera. On the new Pocket 6Ks, the Pros, they have two HDMIs. So this loop through thing that I'm about to do is not really an issue. Don't need that. HDMI in. That's good, that's what I need. Probably just stick this through here or something. And then let's get, the camera's not living here, it's just here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I need an HDMI out as a loop through to go back into this Raven Eye. Now the Raven Eye does not really need to stay on the gimbal anymore. Uh, we're not really going mobile with it. Uh, yeah, I can use one of these little guys. Uh, we're good. All right, let's set this up. All right, so we're hooked up, powered this guy here. This guy is key for why this whole thing's gonna kind of work. But I have to set it. I've literally never turned this thing on before the Blackmagic 3G, the new one, converter. So what's happening is this is all wired up, powered. Signal is coming from the camera into the converter. It should be coming out of the converter into the Raven Eye, as well as sending SDI back to the switcher and I want the camera control which is really just a program feed from our switcher coming back into here to be able to control the preview program all that stuff on the camera really close okay I'm on the Raven eye right now but it's not showing me the same signal as what my camera is showing me up here it's showing me my program feed why is it showing me my program feed well my program feed is currently this camera over here and you can see as I switch uh, between preview and program, it's gonna switch on this app. So I know for a fact I'm getting my program feed and it's not doing, it's not doing a loop through. And I want it to do a loop through. So whew, here's what I gotta do. I have to plug in via the USB-C port a computer, USB-C to C uh, or whatever, to then pull up the settings for this guy, change the settings, hopefully I can control what goes to what port. Uh, hmm. This could prove to be difficult. I thought I was gonna see some settings and I don't. That's not good. Basically, I cannot force the HDMI to be a loop through, I guess. Maybe I need to update the software or something. I could try to do like an aux out of the switcher, go SDI in. 
I could try to just throw another splitter in the mix, but now I'm gonna add decimators and, and start adding millisecond delays, not a huge deal. I can actually, I'm actually gonna use a hyperdeck. I'm looking at hyperdeck sitting right over there. Um, I'm gonna run an HDMI cable out of a hyperdeck. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna always have a hyperdeck recording this guy anyway. HDMI out of that back into the Raven Eye. That only means the only delay I'm gonna have then is the Raven Eye getting a slightly delayed millisecond signal, which will be fine for active tracking. So that's what I'm gonna do. Still don't know if this is gonna 100% work, maybe 80% sure at this point. Now, this should be giving me whatever signal's coming out of the hyperdeck. And so I am now going to take the HDMI that was coming out of this guy, which this guy was just giving me program, plugging into here. If this coupler works, not a great idea to couple HDMI, I know, but for now, this is at least a test. Now it's working. I'm getting the feed from the camera here. If I go wave my hand in front of it, let's see the delay. Not awful, definitely there, right? But for active tracking, it should work well. So let's just, just got signal, let's, let's test it out. I'm gonna stand here in the camera. I'm gonna highlight my face. It's moving, I have it set extremely slow. Let's set it higher. Let's set it really high. Okay, active track speed. As I'm moving, it's following me. I'm not doing anything. This is, this is cool. This is working. Oh, because this is the pocket cinema, unlike our studio cameras, the gains uh, steps by two. Our studio camera is step by six. So we have to click the button three times to get a change. Whereas this, this one is a little more fine control. Something like this is what we're going for. Hey Brian, you're in the shot. Uh, Look at that, so I can tilt up, down, and the camera will move. Uh, basically the way after track works, wherever it's positioned, when you highlight the face is where it's gonna stay. So if I highlight my face while I'm on the left side of the screen, it's going to keep me always on the left side of the screen. I wanna be centered. Not bad. You can see what it's doing over there. A little jittery, let's drop it down to five. Let's see what that does. That's pretty smooth, I would say. I'm turned around, no longer sees my face. It's still tracking me. Um, and it has nothing to do with the phone, but it's still, you can see it over there, it's still tracking me. Okay, so we have Brian, he's sitting at the switcher desk right now. I'm standing on stage. Here's what's about to happen. Brian is going to use the his his left hand, which currently is holding the joystick that's on an extension all the way from the camera. He's gonna frame me up. Uh, once he has me framed the way he likes me, on the iPhone, he's going to just draw a square over my face, right? And so now, once the square is there, I should be tracked. Brian can put the phone down um, and go to switching, right? And so as I move around, the camera should follow me. And so now, Brian can switch a normal show. He can take the Pocket Cinema, which is camera one in this case, he can take that onto program. And without doing anything, I can move around and Brian hasn't lost his shot. And then Brian can be switching between you know, other looks. We can do picture in pictures if we have that kind of stuff set up and we're good to go. So that's kind of the, the use case for this guy. Uh, I have tally markers on both cameras so I can know when to look at the camera that's on program right now or look down at the wide shot. Um, so that's kind of the whole thing here. Uh, no tracking, I can, I can turn around, I can walk kind of out of the frame, it's good to go. And he always has that physical joystick there as a backup to reset it. This is, this is working extremely well, no one's touching it. It's tracking me, I can get closer too, right? I can get lower, I can get down, I can say here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to do. We want to put these everywhere because these things are dope. Okay, let's run around. Let's see how well it does. It's tracking me. I can't lose it. Oh, that's really good. I lost it. I think I won. 
Ronin RS2 with the Pocket Cinema 4K active tracking. That means no cameramen. This thing is dope. Super happy with how it turned out. Uh, and if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. And if you need super source transitions, hit us up. We have more coming out for the A10 Mini Extreme. So that's going to be fun. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Watching. Uh, we uh, read all the comments and you guys' suggestions are great. Uh, I'm responding to all of them before and after this video today. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.